In this tutorial, we're going to add some edit functionality to our contact application. Right now, it's a read-only application. You fetch the data and you can see it, but you cannot change it. What we want to do is be able to change this and when the change is complete, click on a save button and have it persist on the server. Typically, this involves making a REST API call to the server with a put request and making a call to that endpoint where you want to update, right? So you make a put request to the endpoint you want to change and then you pass in the payload that you want to update, right? So that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. I made a couple of changes to the code. So I have broken out the address into multiple fields. You see here, I have a street, city, and state uh, paragraphs, right? Each one of these is into a separate paragraph now. So as you can see here, street, city, and state show up separately. This was in one long uh, line before, and I've kind of broken it down. So you can see the multiple values over here. Okay, now we want to be able to make changes, which means that we're going to have to have some kind of an edit button over here. And then when you click on it, you want these things to be editable. So let me actually go ahead and create the button here. So I'm going to go here and, uh, well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to have these two be columns rather than the rows one below the other. So I want the list of contacts to be on the left and then the details to be on the right. And this is actually fairly easy to do in uh, Bootstrap. The way to do this is by doing a call md6. So this class basically breaks down the whole page into a grid of 12 elements, and you're basically saying this one is a grid of six elements, and this one's a grid of six elements. I'm not gonna go into the detail, but this is basically all we need to do to make this be the, the two column layout. So I'm gonna say row equals class equals row, and this whole thing is gonna be inside a row. All right, let's refresh the page, and given enough width, you see here, it's basically broken down into two columns. You click on one, and here you can see, it's basically the same functionality, just the layout has slightly changed. I'm going to format this a little bit, and uh, let's now add the edit button. Now I'm going to add a button at the media body. So you see here, we have the contact information. I'm gonna add a button over here. So uh, I'm not gonna make it too pretty. I'm just gonna have a button here which says edit. Nothing too fancy or stylistic about this. We're just worried about the functionality. So here you go. We have an edit button over here. Now, when you click on an edit button, it doesn't obviously do anything right now, but what we wanna do is change these address elements into text boxes that can be editable. If you've seen my thinking in AngularJS 1 course, I, you know, I did an approach which was flag-based. I had an edit mode flag, and uh, if the page is in an edit mode, then these text elements would be text boxes, and if the page is not in an edit mode, it would be labels as we have here. Ideally, what you'd like to use is to use some kind of a route state, but uh, the concept of routes is beyond the scope of this course. I'm gonna just do a quick uh, edit mode like implementation. So let's go to the contact controller here and I'm gonna have a flag called edit mode. And it's gonna be false by default. And I'm going to have a method here, set edit mode, or let me call this toggle edit mode. Which is gonna be a function which basically toggles the edit mode. So this dot edit mode is a toggle of this dot edit mode. So if edit mode is true, it makes it false, and if it's false, it makes it true. Now I'm going to call this function whenever the button is clicked. So the button here is the edit button. I'm gonna say ng click equals ctrl dot toggle edit mode. Now there is a button which when clicked is gonna to toggle the edit mode, but we are not really hooking anything into it. So let's actually use text boxes here to convert 
the uh, display into a text element when the edit mode is clicked. So I'm going to take these spans and uh, create text boxes here. So I'm going to say input type equals text and then the ng model because I need to back this with the data. Let me see. This is the model that drives this. And I'm going to copy this over. And of course, change it so that each element points to the right value. And of course, notice that I'm just using a few fields. I don't want to make all those fields editable because it's really no different than what we're doing over here. Uh, just the basic set of fields. Now here you can see we have the label and the text box because we have both the label and the text box here. What we want to do is hide the text box when edit mode is false and uh, hide the label if edit mode is true. So that's a bunch of ng shows and ng hides. So I'm going to go to the spans here. So in these spans, I'm going to say ng hide is ctrl dot edit mode. And then the inputs are going to have ng show equals ctrl dot edit mode because I want the text box to show when the edit mode is turned on. So let's try this again. Okay, we have this button. Well, I guess I missed one text box. Let's see, edit mode. Now it gets into a text box. I click on edit again, it goes away. All right, so this is more like it. So we have an edit mode option where each element here gets converted to a text box, but it's not really a conversion because we know we are doing both and we are showing and hiding selectively, but that gives an impression that it's changing to a text box, which is all we need. Now, each of these text boxes, when they show up, is bound using ng model. So if I were to change this, what we're actually doing is changing the object in the controller. So the controller has the contacts object on it, right? So this is what's getting changed. What we need to do is when we actually are done with the editing, we want to be able to save the changes and have it persisted on the server, right? Let's actually implement the save button right now. So the save button is going to be kind of similar to the edit button. I'm actually going to take this over here and uh, call this save. And I also need to show or hide these buttons depending on the edit mode. So when the edit mode is set to false, then I want the edit button to show up. And if the edit mode is true, then we have text boxes. So I want the save button to show up. So I'm going to have ng hide edit mode for the edit and the ng show edit mode for the save, right? When the edit mode is on, I want the edit button to be hidden and the save button to show up. Let's try this again. All right, let me click on edit. Now the edit button went, goes away and then the save button is what stays. Now I don't have to do any save implementation and it still automatically gets persisted in the browser's memory. And what I mean by that is let's say I call this city as one, two, three, right? I click on save. It actually gets persisted over here. And if I switch to another user, go back to that user you see here, it gets updated. The reason it's doing it is because this view is bound to, again, like I mentioned, the contact object on the controller. The problem, however, is if I were to refresh this and I click on that user again, that goes away. So what we want to do is persist it to the endpoint. We want to be able to make a REST API call and update it. Now, how do I make a REST API call and update that endpoint? So here's the API URL, and I can access a particular user's endpoint by just typing that user ID, right? So this gives me the user information for user ID one. In order to update this information, what I need to do is not a GET request to this URL, but instead a PUT request to the URL where the PUT body is this updated data. If I do that, then it gets saved in the endpoint. So what I need to do is have the save button, which is right now just calling the toggle edit mode. I want that to actually 
send a put request to that endpoint. So I'm going to go back to the HTML and I'm going to make this save save user and I want the save user method in the controller to be a function that does toggle edit mode but then what it also needs to do is persist that data. Now what's the data that needs to be persisted? The data that needs to be persisted is this dot selected contact. This is the data, right? So I'm gonna call this user data equals this dot selected contact. Now I wish there was a service method which took this user data and saved it. Well let's actually create that. So I'm gonna to go to contact data service dot save user and I'm going to pass in the user data, all right? Now this method is basically in charge of all the all the changes that needs to be done, right? And it has to figure out what the URL is and then make a put request. So let's actually create this method in the service. We go to the service here and self.saveUser is gonna be a function and this is gonna contain the user data. Now. How do I make a put request to a particular URL? Well, I do a dollar HTTP dot put. So again, dollar HTTP has a bunch of methods for each HTTP method. Like it has a method for get, it has a method for post. Here we're using a method for put. Let's figure out what the URL is later. But the put method also takes in a second argument, which is the put body. Similar to a post method, which also takes in a second argument, which is the post body. Does the get method take in a get body? Well, there's no such thing as a get body in HTTP, so it really doesn't. But for the put method, here you first argument is a URL, and the second argument is the put body. Here in this case, it's just user data. Okay, that's all we need to do. Now, how do we figure out what the URL is? Well, the root URL is localhost 3000 slash contacts. And this is gonna give you everything, right? And what we want to do is figure out what's the URL for that one user and how do we find that? Well, this object has a property called ID which contains that ID. So what we need to do is get that user's ID and add it to the contacts. If you're getting the URL for this user, just get that ID, which is one here, and then append slash one to it. And now we have the URL for that user. So what we need to do here is get the root URL and append that ID. So I'm gonna get the root URL here. And then, of course, the slash. And then add user data dot ID. All right? Now, once this is done, well, this is again gonna be uh, an async call, right? So it's gonna return a promise. So I'm gonna do a dot then on top of it, and then call in a function, which takes in a response and I'm just gonna log this right now. I'm gonna say console.log response. All right, I'm gonna save the controller as well. All right, so let's test this out now. I'm gonna click on a user, click on edit, change a field, and of course I'm gonna open the console, and then now I click save, we get a response back, which is the result of the put. And if you examine the data, well, this is actually returning the updated value. So let's check if the city got updated. Location, city is updated. If I click refresh, the browser has cleared its memory and it's gotten from the service. Click on that user again, well, there you go. The updated value is now showing up. So this is a very simple put implementation. But what we also want to do is have some kind of an alerting mechanism so that the user knows when the change happened. So let's do that at the next tutorial.